I finally worked with Ping Jun and his company and his services, his training, his events are amazing. I highly recommend it. Hey, this is Ping Jun here. And most of the time, when marketers utilize testimonials, most testimonials are used incorrectly. And when used incorrectly, it feels like this pitch. It feels salesy, it feels pushy, it feels like here comes the diary of testimonials. And <laughs> you probably have noticed that very happening very often whenever a marketer comes on the pitch, on a webinar, on a sales video, and towards the end, they have got this barrage of testimonials. I call it the testimonial diarrhea, where this back-to-back -back testimonial of people saying, oh, this thing's amazing. Now, today in this video, I wanna be able to take you behind the scenes on how to use testimonials the right way, the strategic way, using it as a tool to empower and inspire others, but also where it helps you increase your sales as well, at the same time, to increase conversions. Today in this video, I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes to a coaching call that I recently did to show you how can you utilize your audience's journey and captivate your current audience and motivate them, help them get unstuck, but at the same time, also increase your conversions significantly. By the end of this video, once you model the concept together with the messaging and languaging, it's gonna change the way you look at testimonials forever. Let's begin. Chris Cook. Chris, welcome, I'm gonna unmute you next. Welcome, so Chris, perhaps we can start out, I believe this would be your first ever hot seat with us as well. Maybe. That's right, yep, yep. Welcome. Walk Good to be here. Let's, let's, let's begin with who do you serve and the result you help your audience generate? Okay, so we've been a business coaching company for five, six years now. And we've been, we've ran hundreds of events. And our funnel is kind of similar to yours, I guess. We go out to business owners in the UK, London, Manchester, Birmingham, and we offer them an opportunity to join us at a free event. And we've been at that free event, we'll then sell them a core offer which includes a live event. And then at that live event, we'll sell them into a larger high ticket program. And we've had good results with that over a number of years now. We ran an event last weekend in London and we had a really good show up rate for that. Lots of business owners there. And yeah, we did pretty well out of that. Okay, so typically what I love to be able to do first is I want to be able to identify the weakest link because typically the weakest link would be the bottleneck of this entire thing. So let's take a look at and see what it might be. I want to be able to see, is it the ad? Is it the funnel? Is it the, so your show up rate is good. Your closing rate is good as well. You know, the, the, what's the price point for the 30 people that signed up? And what's the model after that? What does it include? Is there a backend after that? I think where we've been a bit weaker, I think actually our content and building the relationship with the client could be improved. And I think the hook, the outcome of actually turning up to this event right, is where we probably, we could do with a bit of sharpening up. And we've had it easy for a while and now we need to get better. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll start off with taking a look at some of the ads and then we'll take a look at the funnel link in order to determine um, what can we work on and improve. Okay, so the first thing would be the ads, okay? How many ads do you have running? Like based on this, how many variations are there typically that's active so, whenever so, you do it? So what we typically do, we, over the years, as Chris said, we've been going six years. We had a number of good Facebook accounts that were restricted and we lost accounts that I'd spent up to two million pound in. We'd lost those. So we had to start afresh with a new account and had to do it for an agency because we just can't get the ads through personally anymore. You know, for whatever reason, we've really struggled with that. We've been through the appeals, we've been through it so many times. It's just easier to use an agency for Facebook ads now. We used to run them all in-house, you know, but we don't anymore. Okay, let's take a look at and see how we can decrease this because we can definitely decrease it, okay? The first thing that is sticking out pretty significantly is the name of the page your agency is utilizing to run the ads. Okay, now, yeah. how I've always looked at, at ads is I know from just crazy amount of tests that an ad from a named person page always outperform any type of 
business organization page, even if the ads, the copy, the image says the same exact thing. And the reason for that is because the moment any type of company or organization appears on somebody's feed, in the end consumer's mind is, oh, it must be an ad, right? Because there's no other reason why they would see big biz promotions on their feed. Okay, so that's number one. So ad blindness instantly kicks in because of that and you are already at a disadvantage. That's number one. Number two, I think even when it's a company name, like big biz promotions, the word promotions in there is the thing that kind of like makes it even worse. It's like a company name is bad enough, but now it's like promotions. And last thing a person would want to see is like more promotions on their page, right? So that to me is actually good news because the fact that you're able to get this current result in spite of this current setup tells me that just this one quick fix of running ads from a name person page is going to have a dramatic improvement. Now, is there a specific reason why the agency didn't hook up your named page? Well, mine, I've got on Facebook, I've got about 340,000 people that follow me on my personal page. On my Instagram, I've got 220,000. But those pages have got, are pretty much restricted from advertising. So if I'm well known in the United Kingdom because I've been doing this a long time and I've been doing a lot of events and things like that. Probably one of the most well-known speakers in this country. Uh, but in terms of us getting any ads through, it's just now, it's just crippled, isn't it, Chris? It's like, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, unfortunately, pretty much every restriction that could have happened to a business has happened to us. And most of it is false, unfortunately. And we've had appeal after appeal after appeal, but it has led to names pages. Here's the next best scenario then. If that constant appeal is something that you guys have attempted in the past, what I would do is, at the very least then, the next thing I'll try to do is maybe now it's just named page, fan page. Yeah. That's the actual name of fan page, right? And then try to run ads from there to see what happens. Yeah. Now, if for some reason they're still flagging that, then the next thing that I would do is I would like have your, maybe the company name as the name page. So at least it's still building up some sort of presence and goodwill for the company name. And I would not utilize the word promotions as part of the thing because it feels off. That's my that opinion. makes it really right. Yeah, yeah, it does. Unfortunately, the big business events page is in a business manager that's been restricted. <laughs> So we're going to have to perhaps do something with that as well. But we'll right. work something on, out. On YouTube and TikTok, like I've got verified accounts on both YouTube and TikTok. We haven't got any problems. It's just Facebook. So the next thing would be, let's look at the ads. I would make it so that when it comes to the ad copy, I would not start off with free social media training. And the reason for that is because when it comes to like frameworks for ads, we never want to go with the call to action first or the modality of the offer because we haven't given them any type of value or we haven't really started the conversation just yet. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to segment deeper into the conversation by bringing up some sort of problem and solution for my target audience before I have an offer or a call to action. So for example, like, are you a business person looking to discover the secret of social media? Here's an important thing to distinguish when it comes to ads. Okay. Now it is very common that since the evolution of ads and how people started writing ads, typically most advertisers and marketers came from the world of direct response. And in a world of direct response, that's how ad agencies and marketers have been conditioned. We think that, or rather they think that what makes a great ad is something that's worked well in direct response, which is identifying our target audience, doing a call out and putting it on our ad because we think that doing a call out on direct response works therefore an ad in the ad world and social media, it works as well. When in fact, it doesn't translate that well. Why is that? Okay, so when we do a call out, Okay, now what is a call out? A call out is like attention business owner, attention musicians, attention real estate agents. Okay. The problem with a call out is that when a person is scrolling on social media, 
And when there's a call out where they belong into that specific segment, just because they are part of the segment, they are not necessarily raising a hand saying, hey, that's me, right? So for example, this would be kind of like if an ad started off with attention, are you a homeowner looking to sell your home quickly? Even though I might be a homeowner and maybe I might be looking to sell my home, I'm not going, oh, wait a second, I am a homeowner and I'm looking to sell my home quickly. And the reason for that is because people don't like being called out to. People don't like being called out like attention, real estate agents, attention, Facebook marketer, attention cost creators. So a much better way to do it is, and this is something that you know I talk about quite a bit in, in our implementation week for ads, is to do a call out without doing a call out. So how do we do a call out without doing a call out where our ideal audiences raise their hand is by coming from the angle of mentioning that specific keyword and allowing them to identify themselves. So a great way would be, for example, if let's say you are targeting business owners specifically in the service-based industry, right? Which is one of the things that you mentioned earlier. So this would be as somebody that has been helping local service-based businesses scale, I noticed that there are commonly five main issues that they face. And today in this video, in this post, I'm going to walk you through what are the five common problems and how to go about them when it comes to scale, right? Number one. Now, when you do that, that is when your target audience is going, oh, wait a second, that's me. And this person is about to give me value because this, this post is speaking directly to me, right? Rather than you know, free social media training. Are you a business person looking to discover a secret social media? That's, that's very different, right? So it's very different compared to after helping over 176 local businesses gather more leads online, we realized that there are three common mistakes that businesses, especially in the local-based, service-based industry would typically make, right? Number one, number one, they don't have a process. Number two, they don't know how to generate leads online. Number three, so, so now it's like, oh, I feel like this post is talking to me and there's something I can learn or discover or take away or some sort of aha moment from this post. And it's calling out to me without saying, attention, are you a local-based business looking to get more leads online, right? And people don't like to be called out that way. So like for everybody else over here, when it comes to like ads, think about it as that normal, casual conversation first where we want to be able to provide value. We want to be able to demonstrate that we are capable of having a conversation, which is like in the world of ads, problem, solution, before we come to the offer. So this would be like the big picture tweak that I would make on the ads here. Okay. And based on this, I don't know how many creatives you have, but I'll definitely make it so that there's more videos, more images, especially with your type of ad spend. With your type of ad spend, definitely right now, your creatives are definitely being fatigued out and you want to utilize more angles, more hooks, more headlines to be able to support that level of ad spend for each event that you're doing. Oh, perfect. And we'll make those changes. That, that was worth it alone. Well, I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes to this coaching call. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway is. And as always, be sure to smash the like button. It does help the channel out a little bit and to subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified of future videos just like this one. Now, some of you asking me, how can I be part of this process? How can I ask you questions? How can I have you coach me or mentor me? Um, we want to make sure that we are working with the people that's the right fit. You'll need to fill up a form. There's a link right below this video. Somebody on my team might give you a call to interview you to see if they're right fit for each other. And if you want to apply and see if you're a good fit, then all you need to do is click on this link in the description box below and my team will be in touch with you.